Leave a like on this video and I'll actually give you nothing at all. Now, but what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just imagine you're chilling with your girlfriend. Life is awesome. You stare into her eyes lovingly and then all of a sudden this emo kid walks in and says that you must fight him to the death to decide who gets your girlfriend. And at that moment, you seriously just sit there and question your life choices. That is the story I'll be telling today. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this story. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the story James. So anyways, there's an e there was a kid in James's class who we're gonna call the emo kid. He kept to himself, he wore crazy makeup and the dark clothing and whatever, and uh, honestly it doesn't really matter what you wear, but he was also extremely melodramatic. Like he would come in, he'd be like, Society doesn't understand me. No one gets me. I'll never fit in. He, he was kind of like one of those kids that kind of just like would say this stuff and then would be like, why do I not have friends? I'm just a melodramatic freak all the time, which, uh, I mean, I was pretty weird <laughs> in middle school, so like I can't really speak. But uh, then again, hey man. Anyways, so there's also a girl in, uh, I don't know, I'll just call her like, uh, we'll just call her Kate, right? It's Name of my friend back home. Uh, so anyways, James and the emo kid, unfortunately, decided, had to cross, cross paths because they both had a thing for this girl. And this Friday, right, so this story all starts, th like, this weekend, or not this weekend, we'll say starts on Monday. And this Friday, remember, not actually this Friday, I mean this Friday in the story, was going to be the school dance and the whole thing was like whoever got the slow dance with this girl was basically gonna like if you so the thing at James's school is if you slow danced with a girl you were basically dating her at this point you guys were practically in love at that point so it was a pretty big deal who was gonna get the slow dance and it was the emo kid versus James and this became very public knowledge like the emo kid was telling everyone that he was gonna 100% get the slow dance and people kind of knew James because James is more popular he wasn't like I don't know some like really annoying popular person he was just like a cool guy that everyone liked I mean at least according to James who submitted this story so who really knows but we'll go with it right so everyone kind of knew that both the emo kid and uh, James were both fighting for this girl, Kate. And Kate made it pretty clear that, you know, she was not going to say yes to the emo kid. Like, sorry, unlucky. Life just works out like that. But she was considering saying yes to James. She was kind of just keeping... Uh, the truth was that she was going to say yes to James if he asked. However, she just wanted to keep him kind of like on his toes and questioning or whatever right so uh yeah throughout that whole week uh the emo kid and james they didn't really like they weren't like in a fight with each other but they it was kind of like they were kind of like rivals in a sense even though they never had any direct confrontation and let's just skip ahead to that friday it was the day of the school dance it was emo kid versus james so anyways at this point you know the emo kid is like you know he's kind of like he's standing in the corner at the dance right look i was pretty awkward in, in high school and middle school when it came to those big dances but to be fair everyone else was as well but uh, the emo kid was kind of taking it to a whole different level he literally was like slouched in the corner of the room his like long black hair kind of like down almost like you know that scene from the ring with that like the girl who comes out of the tv he was kind of looking like that chick for a second so he was definitely not helping himself out in this situation and at this point james and his boys were kind of standing like together whatever they were dancing to i don't know i don't freaking know what they play at high school dances maybe some uh whip nene by silento yeah I, I don't know man it's a middle school dance bro i don't know how this works but anyways they're kind of waiting for the slow song to come on maybe some I don't know, some like song by Adele or something like that. Like the when like, <sighs> dude, I always try and like say lines from songs during these stories and I just blank every single time. Um, but anyways, yeah, so they're all kind of waiting around there and it was uh, eventually the slow dance song came on. And remember, you might be thinking, oh man, who cares? It's just like a slow song. No, no, no. What you have to understand is the slow song meant everything to these kids like the slow song basically if you had a slow song with some girl because remember they were in middle school this this was like seventh eighth grade so the probably the farthest you ever went with a girl was like slow dancing or maybe holding her hand if you were like crazy because you know if you hold a if you, if you hold a girl's hand for too long there is a chance you get her pregnant so <laughs> definitely not misinformation from the connor pugs channel <laughs> but anyways slow dance was a really big deal and all of a sudden the song comes on 
And the thing was, right, uh, the, the, the emo kid was too busy kind of like sulking about society in the corner of the room to react quick enough. So James was like, all right, bro, like that guy's playing himself. I'm going to go in. So James very quickly goes in and boom, he gets there, goes up. He's like, hey, like, hey, like, can I have this dance? And she very happily says yes, because she said, like, oh, I don't know if I'll say yes. She knew. She was bluffing the whole time. And James kind of felt pretty confident about it. And even though she said, I don't know, he was pretty confident because her friends were like, yeah, dude, she's totally bluffing. Like, I hate to expose my friend like that, but she definitely has a thing for you. You're, you're chilling. You're in the green. So anyways, James goes in. He feels pretty good about the whole thing. But let me just say that the emo kid eventually looks up and then he sees this. And the emo kid is not having it. Uh, so <laughs> he does something pretty insane. So uh, strap in and definitely prepare for the cringe. If you have your uh, cringe seatbelt un unbuckled, I'm actually going to fine you for your own safety. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and uh, buckle that cringe seatbelt because there was like a DJ station and there was like a guy who was like, DJing quote unquote and there was like a microphone so like you so like the DJ could say like hey like 20 minutes till the dance is done or get ready for this hype song or whatever and other than that he just he was really just a Spotify playlist <laughs> he just like he just edited the Spotify playlist right however the DJ let the Spotify playlist run on autoplay or whatever and he went to the bathroom so the emo kid ran up to the uh he ran up to like the spot or whatever he grabs the microphone he stops the music first of all he goes up to the Spotify clicks pause on the music and screams into the microphone wait and everybody turns around everybody turns around and they look at this kid and they're all kind of like looking at this emo kid who's standing at the front of the room with like the the, the microphone he picks it up He's like, Kate, no. So at this point, everyone's kind of looking at this kid like, oh my God, because they all knew that like he wanted to have the dance with Kate, but like James obviously got it. So they were like, ah, that's tough, man. Like life sometimes doesn't work out the way you want it to. Like that's just unfortunate how that goes. However, you know, he goes up there and he's like, he goes in the microphone, like he says, wait. And everyone turns around, the music is off. He's like, Kate, may I have this dance? And everyone's so confused because, first of all, he turned off the slow song in the middle of the song. And also, she was already dancing with someone. And instead of just going up to her, he makes a massive scene in front of everyone, grabbing the microphone and screaming into it, saying, like, will you have this dance? And the thing is, right, it's caused enough commotion that the guy, like the DJ that was hired, ran back. Because I think he was supposed to be there the whole time, but he needed to, like, rip a piss or something, so he needed to go. And he runs back over. He's like, give that back to me. He, like, snatches it out of the emo kid's hand. He's like, sorry for the, inter in in sorry for the interruption, guys. Turns the music back on, like, starts, like, not cursing out this kid, he's a middle schooler, but being like, dude, what do you think you're doing? You can't just like, come up here and take this stuff. Like, if like if you do this again, I'm going to tell your teachers and you'll be in big trouble. Or, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how much trouble a, uh, a, a hired DJ can get you in, but, you know, the emo kid returns to his cor corner and literally just sits down, just slumps into the corner of the room, which James felt kind of bad. He felt a little bit bad because, like, James has definitely been in that position, I say that very kind of liberally because James has not actually been in a position where he grabs the microphone at the school dance, stops the music, and asks the girl out unsuccessfully. He hasn't specifically been there, but he's definitely been in a situation where it just hasn't gone his way. So he feels bad, man. You know, it feels bad, man. You hate to see it. But uh, yeah, anyways, James like continued on with the slow... I mean, he's not going to stop his life because this kid has an unlucky moment. Like, that's tough. So, uh, yeah, you know, while I, I will say there was kind of an awkward moment because while, like, James is, like, slow dancing with Kate, he kind of, like, turns around, like, they, they kind of, like, turn around so now James is facing the emo kid, and he just looks up, and the emo kid is staring at him with, like, the creepiest, most stalkerish, most scariest stare he's ever seen because the emo kid is slumped over, like, the girl from the ring, right, and is just, like, staring right at him. His, like, long black hair, like 
covering most of his face besides his eyes and he's like slumped over too like kind of like crouching over like an old guy with a cane or something but without a cane and james is like hey do you mind if we turn like 45 degrees this way or 90 degrees this way ah thank you that's much better so he doesn't have to see him anymore or actually let's do a whole 180 i mean he didn't ask for a 180 because he didn't want like kate to be making eye contact with him either but yeah so that was a bit of a tough situation however you might be thinking well i mean at this point, reasonably, the emo kid must have realized that this just wasn't his day, and uh, he must have just, like, given up, which he's already, I mean, he's already embarrassed himself. Like, he probably gave up after this point. And uh, while that would be pretty fair for you to believe, that was unfortunately not the, that was just not what happened, because the emo kid would continue, um, let me just say that the emo kid thought that if he, if he had a sword fight with James, that he would be able to win the honor of his lady. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. Leave, I will try and heart as many of those comments I possibly can. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best possible thing you can do is just watch this video throughout the entirety, the entirety of this video. And then afterwards, if you could watch some of my old videos, that helps more than you can ever imagine. Please go in the comment section and tell me how many of my old videos you've watched today or this week. I'll heart it and say thank you because it helps me out more than you can ever imagine. Anyways, let's go back to the story because the emo kid is not done. In fact, he is far from being done. So what happened after the school dance, like over the weekend, um, James actually met up with Kate. They went to like go get dinner together. And that's when they officially started dating, whatever that means in eighth grade, which means, oh my God, they're going to sit together at lunch. Oh my God, dude, that's crazy, right? Uh, but anyway, so James officially starts dating this girl. Word gets around really quickly. And eventually the emo kid, I I'm pretty sure at this point the emo kid would have known, but... By his next actions, it's not super clear. So that Monday is the first kind of like lunch day that uh, uh, Kate and, uh, what, what's his name, James, are going to be having their first real at-school lunch date, which is a pretty big deal for the eighth graders there. Obviously, it's not that big of a deal in general, but hey, man, let them have their fun. And so, uh, yeah, he sits down, like he finds Kate, they sit down, and they're at a table by themselves, and like people are looking over and talking and be like, ooh, someone's dating, <laughs> whatever, right? And uh, however, James, you know, Kate is facing away from the door, but James is facing the door, and James sees the door open up, and he sees the emo kid walk in, and James is like, ah, this is tough. Because James feels bad. He legitimately feels bad because, I mean, if the roles were reversed, he would feel bad, like, seeing the girl that he really liked a week ago sitting with the guy who was low-key his, like, enemy rival on a date. Like, that would be tough to see. And James started to feel a little bit worried when the emo kid starts to approach him, right? Starts to approach him. And, uh, yeah, so the emo kid walks up to their table and at this point, Kate also realizes that someone's walking up, so she turns around. And the emo kid walks up and doesn't look at James. He's not paying any attention to James. He's actually acting as if James doesn't even exist at this point. The emo kid turns to the girl, uh, Kate, I forgot her name for a second, says, Kate, I've been wanting to ask this for a while, but since we've become so close in the last couple weeks, which they have never spoken before, but that is beyond the point. At this point, that is beyond the point. He's like, I was wondering if you would like to go on a date with me, if you would like to start dating. And uh, James is like, oh, no, he doesn't know. How does he not know? Because James is like, everybody knows. Everybody told everybody, but I guess everybody didn't tell the emo kid. Of course they didn't. And Kate at this point is like, oh, well, I'm very flattered. And the emo kid's like, well, if you're flattered, then you should say yes, correct? And at this point, she's like, oh, well, you see... It's actually not great timing because I'm actually currently in a relationship. And the emo kid's like, what? How? With who? And James is like, oh my god, this is, this is so awkward. He doesn't know. So James has kind of assumed that the emo kid didn't think anything of the fact that James got like the dance with her, which 
in all reality, he was the emo kid was kind of the one who had the most common sense in that situation because just because someone dances with a girl once doesn't mean anything, right? But at this high, at this middle school, if you got the slow dance, you were basically in. You were locked in at this point is what I'm trying to say. So Kate has to go on to awkwardly explain to the emo kid that, well, um, the guy that she's sitting at right now on the lunch date with happens to be the guy that she's dating. And the emo kid turns to James, looks at him, looks him down and up. Like, there's like the elevator look when he looks at like the top of his head, looks all the way down and looks all the way up, turns back to Kate and is like, really, dude? You decided to date this guy when you could have dated me? He's like, bruh. And he just like, he just kind of like storms out of there. And uh, James looks at Kate and he's like, dude, how did that kid not know that we're dating at this point? Like, I swear to God, all your friends told everybody. Like, and Kate's like, dude, my friends didn't tell everyone. And James is like, if you ask anyone at the school, besides the emo kid, apparently, they will know. And Kate's like, yeah, okay, my, my friends do talk a lot. And they're like, well, that was pretty awkward. Hopefully nothing else happens again. You might be thinking at this point, Connor, the emo kid must stop. There is no way he continues on. There's not a chance that he continues, right? Well, 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 I got some news for you guys. He does continue, and it's bad. Because uh, you might be thinking that, oh, well, the emo kid stormed off and he was done. No. About 20 minutes later, when there's only like 10 minutes left to lunch, James sees the doors open up again, and he's like, you gotta be kidding me, dude, because the emo kid walks through. But this time, he is like stomping towards James super angrily. He runs up to the table practically, looks at James, looks him in the eye, and says, it's not over between us. It is far from over between us. And he's like taking his little finger and like pointing at James, and James is like, okay, nice. Like, I, 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 like, we do not care. Like, I, 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 I don't know what else to say at this point. Like, okay, cool, nice. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to say? And the emo kid after that is like, you better watch yourself. It's about to get bad. And he, like, storms out of there. And, you know, at this point, James is like, okay, well, I guess uh, that answers my question. So the next day at lunch is where things get really, really, really crazy. So he's sitting there with, uh, with Kate on his second date. James is enjoying himself. He's having a good time with Kate. They're enjoying each other's presence. They're, they're doing well. I mean, they're, they're kind of clicking, so things might continue on, right? And that's when the emo kid walks in. And he's carrying, like, two sticks, like, two pretty good-sized sticks that he probably found in the backyard of the school. So in the backyard of the school, there's, like, a mini forest. Nothing too crazy, but there's, like, a pretty big forest back there. And the emo kid must have gone back there and, like, found two decent-sized sticks. He walks into the cafeteria with one stick in one hand and one stick in the other. And James is just looking at him. And he's like, he kind of says like to Kate, he's like, okay, we got trouble. Kate turns around, looks at it, and it's just like, turns back around and is like, what? And James is like, yeah, I have no idea what's happening, but I guess we're about to see. So the emo kid walks up to the table, like kind of like waddles his way up. And he's like, you. And he like hands the stick to James. And James is like, uh, like, I need a little explanation. What do you want me to do with this? Like, it's not super clear. The emo kid's like, you and I will have a sword battle, and whoever wins the sword battle will have the uh, will 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 win the honor of your lady, and will. At, at this point, like Kate's like, what? And James's like, dude, what are you saying? He's like, fight me, fight me to the death. The winner gets your girl. And James is like, no. And the emo kid's like, oh, so you're scared of me then? You know that you're gonna lose, and that's why you don't want to do it. And James is like, well, I'm not convinced I'm going to lose. I mean, I'm not an expert at random stick fighting or whatever. But at the same time, why would I want to even engage? Like, why would I even want to do it? And the emo kid's like, well, uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, for the sake of your honor, bro. Like, do you really want to be known as the guy who chickened out because he's a chicken? And James is like, well... I mean, I, I don't really care, but I also don't want to be known as the guy 
who went on, st- who during the like the dance last Friday grabbed the DJ's microphone and like stopped the music to like ask out a girl who was very clearly in the middle of dancing with someone else, and then come into school the next day super angry with a bunch of sticks and try and like fight some guy to get the girl that already obviously said no to him twice. At this point, the emo kid's like. So you're, what you're saying is that you're too scared to fight me and because you know you'll lose. James is like, dude, we're going in circles right now. I'm not fighting you. I'm not having a sword fight to the death. Like, okay, I'm just not doing that. At this point, the emo kid's like, fine. Well, you're about to see me in my final form where I am the most powerful. And James is like, uh, okay. Like, word. And then the emo kid reaches up to James and rips out like a strand of his hair. And James is like, dude, like that hurt. Like, why would you do that? And the emo kid's like, I need that for my wizardly spells. And he like laughs really awkwardly and like shuffles out of there. And James turns to Kate. He's like, dude, (sighs) like what life choice did I make to get myself to this position? Like, what did, what did I do wrong? Like, what choices did I make that got me here? And Kate's like, I don't know. Like, this is kind of tough. He's like, yes, why me? Like, why? Why? Like, he just, dude just came up to me with a bunch of sticks and says, I want to fight you, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, he just, like, pulls a piece of hair. Like, what? Huh? Bro? I, 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 I just don't know. I just don't know what to do at this point. And Kate's like, yeah, I I don't know. But, like, I think eventually he'll just get bored of whatever he's doing and give up. So, anyways, next day, it is uh, lunch. Lunch once again. And James comes in, and he finds Kate. And he's almost like they sit down. And he's almost like, he's really stiff. He's, like, not talking that much. And Kate's like, are you good? Like, is everything okay? And James is like, dude, it's not you. It's just the email. I just don't know what that kid's going to do today. Like, I'm not trying to lose any more hair. Like, that That really hurt last night. Like, I was starting to bleed from my scalp where he pulled me. Like, that was ridiculous. And, you know, Kate's like, yeah, that kid's pretty weird. Like, sorry you have to go through with that. And speak of the devil, dude. Because at that point, the emo kid walks in. And at this point, he has a backpack on. And he has a, <laughs> he has a smaller stick. And he has, <laughs> he has a stick in his hand, a smaller one. In a, like a, like a spirit Halloween wizard hat on. (laughs) And and James is like, you gotta be kidding me, bro. Like he was, you gotta be kidding me. And at this point, Kate's like, what? She turns around and she's like, oh my God. And the email kid walks up and she's, and he's like, ha ha ha. Like, this is where you made your mistake, James. This is where you made your last mistake. And he walks out, and he sits next, and he, like, stands up next to them. He reaches into his backpack or whatever. He takes out a piece of chalk. He takes out, the like, a, a, a plastic bag that has a hair in it, presumably, um, what's it, uh, James's hair. And he also has, like, a candle set and a lighter. And he sits down on their, t- he, like, sits down next to them. And so they had concrete floors in the, uh, in the, in the lunchroom. So next to them, he draws like a pentagram, puts a bunch of like candles around, uh, like the pentagram, takes James's hair, puts it in the middle, lights all the candles. At this point, like this is taking like two minutes to do. Kate and James are just sitting there looking at him completely aghast. Like what is like, just like, what is this kid? What is this kid on? Like, whatever he's on, dude, like, maybe get me some of that. Oh, my God. No, but they were just like, w- 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 I mean, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to say? So eventually the emo kid has his whole, uh, I don't know, his magic setup is all done or whatever you want to call it. And he lights, starts lighting all the candles. He's like, James, this is your last chance. Give me your girlfriend and I won't put a spell on you. And James is like, dude, what do you mean give me my girlfriend? Like, it's a, it's like a mutual choice to be like girlfriend and boyfriend. Like <laughs> you're acting as if this is like the, the, the 1600s or something. And like, when, and like the, the wife is the property, of the husband, bro, like, what are you talking about? And you know, he's like one more chance, bro. I'm about to put a crazy spell on you. If you don't give me your girlfriend and Kate, this is when Kate speaks up and is like, dude, like, even if he said that he was going to give me to you, I'm not going to be, like, I'm not going to be your boyfriend. Like, I'm not going to be your girlfriend, dude. And the emo kid's like, well, 
I'm going to put a spell on you too, dude, if you don't become my... He literally threatens Kate. Is, and he's like, oh, if you don't become my girlfriend, I'm going to put a spell on you as well, which... Okay, um, I might not be the smoothest individual. I might not be, I don't know, the one that has the greatest pickup lines of all time. My Tinder one's pretty funny. I did steal it from my friend, but maybe I'll... I'll 5,000 likes and I'll reveal it because um, it's, it's pretty funny, but it's also a little embarrassing. But here's one thing I do now. There's a very decent chance that if you threaten to cast a spell on a woman if she doesn't become your girlfriend... She's probably, probably, not 100%, but probably not going to become your girlfriend. I know I might be going out on a crazy limb right now, and I, you guys might completely disagree, and maybe you found your wife of 10 years who loves you very much from threatening her with magical spells. I just don't think that's a great way to do it. So eventually the emo kid finishes up, and then he lights the hair in the middle, and then he takes his magic wand, waves it around, and just starts saying a bunch of nonsense. And at this point, half the, like, the, the entire cafeteria has turned, is just like looking. They've almost like circled around it like it was a school fight or something. They've circled around it and they're just like, what the frick, bro? Like, oh my god, like what's going on right now? And eventually the emo kid like points his magic wand at, um, at James and is like, ooga booga, or I, I don't know, he's just saying some nonsense. And uh, like literally 15 seconds of pure silence happened and then very clearly nothing happens and he's like i'm gonna give you one more chance i'm gonna give you, i'm gonna i'm gonna count to three if you don't you're gonna explode because of my spells and james is like i think i'm gonna take the risk he's like three i'm gonna give you one more chance bro like i'm gonna give you one more chance and james is like nope i'm gonna take the risk here two and he's like yeah no i'm, I'm good man like, you can go ahead with this. If I explode, I explode. Like, that's tough. One? Last chance, dude. I'm being super generous right now. Just give me your girlfriend and we'll be all good here. And James is like, nah, I'm, I'm chilling, bro. He's like, fine. Kicks it. The, the emo kid literally kicks over his magic, like, whatever set. Because I think he knew it wasn't going to work anyways. Which, thankfully, it was concrete floors and nothing, like flammable because like the candles fly all over the place or whatever and he storms out of there he like storms out of there at this point <laughs> james sits back down he's like you know maybe we should go on dates at night when we're not in school and kate's like you know that's not a bad idea so the next day kate and james actually don't sit together at lunch um they sit separately um but uh, yeah, so they, they, just, they decide that if they're going to like do anything, at least for a little bit to do it outside of school, like after school or at lunch or something like that. But the emo kid once again comes up to James and James is like, oh my God. Oh my God, dude. Like what? What now? And the emo kid, like he literally goes on one knee and like kind of like presents. He's like, he's down on one knee, puts his head down and says like, I concede. I concede the battle you win. Like, I just, like, I tried everything possible, but you are the better duelist. Like, I honorably concede. And in James's head, he's like, bro, he didn't say this, but he's like, bro, you did not honorably concede. You did the least honorable, con like, <laughs> you did not concede honorably. But at this point, James sees this as a perfect opportunity for the emo kid to just stop. So he's like, all right, man, like, it was a good battle. It was really close and you'll get them next time. Like, honestly, James is trying to be as chill as possible so that the emo kid doesn't come back and be like, well, actually, I'm going to try more magic or something. And the emo kid stands up, and he like kind of like nods his head, and James nods his head back, and the emo kid bows and leaves. And yeah, after that point, James and, the, and uh, Kate actually were able to like do like lunch dates or whatever in school again. Uh, the relationship lasted like six months. It didn't last crazy long, but Kate and James are still cool to this day. 